Hey there, so this is gonna be a video on how to make an 808 or 909 style clap sound in Reactor. This is gonna have a lot of overlap with another tutorial that's on YouTube on the ADSR channel, but I just wanted to have more control when I was building my version of the clap patch, and I thought the decisions that I made might be helpful to other people. So to start off, I'm gonna make a new macro and just call it clap. I don't need these two inputs. And I'll make a mini gate in. Send that into the macro. So in here, we'll make an output. And attach that. So for a clap, the first thing we're gonna need is a noise oscillator. I'll create a constant value of one just to make that uh, on. And we just need a DR envelope, a decay and a release. So we don't need to be able to change the attack. We'll make an amp mixer, attach that to the output and a multiply. To multiply the envelope by the noise. Then into the mixer. Uh, so I, I like to make controls as I go to kind of keep things looking and feeling like an actual instrument. So here's decay. can hear that we're getting something. I'm going to also attach the decay to the release. So those are just the same value. So if I, even if I just hit it quickly, it's still going to give me that full release, like a one shot sample style. Uh, and I'll make a control for this. And we're here. Okay. Good. Good enough. I'm gonna do something else, which I think will be helpful later. In the block section of the um, Native Instruments blocks, under Utility, I'm gonna, there's a scope, which we can use to visualize what we're doing, which I think is really helpful. I'll leave this macro and attach the output here. And another thing I'll do is I'll take the gate and put that into the side chain input of the scope. What that'll allow us to do is if I put the sync mode to side chain Z crossing, it restarts the scope every time we get a signal. So it's synced. The beginning of the scope is synced. Um, and right now that doesn't look like much, but it's going to be useful later. Okay, so the next thing we need is a filter. I'm going to make a really simple band pass out of two two-pole filters. The multi-two-pole. Duplicate that. Actually. So I'm going to do high pass first and low pass second. And the reason I'm doing high pass first, if I create a control, that's the cutoff. I can just make the cutoff of the low pass filter uh, an offset of the cutoff. So the first one is my width, or the first one is my cutoff, and the second control is my width, so how wide it is. Um, I need an add. And I'll duplicate this knob. The default range of the cutoff is 20 to 120 because that's what the filter um, macros or the filter expects. I don't need it to be quite that wide. So I'll go in here, I'll make the minimum zero, 
and the maximum say 80 that might even be more but it, it doesn't matter we can adjust that later so basically this is our low path value, uh, width is our low pass value which is relative to our high pass value so useful good enough for now now the next thing we need to do is for a clap sound we need the cascading envelopes uh, one after the other to simulate the sound of a clap. So I'm going to do a DR envelope again, and we'll make four because we, um, that, well, that's how many the 808 and 909 have. I'm gonna make that. Actually, for now, I'm just going to, use this full screen because we don't need to see the other stuff. And then uh, to get these to cascade, we'll use a single delay. So that's being triggered by the gate. And at the same time, the first D, uh, DR envelope is being filtered. Then this will uh, filter the second envelope and also trigger another delay and so on. Cascading. For the delay time, we'll create another control. Um, this can control all of the delays and for the range of that. It, maximum we would need is 50. Um, and the step size should be 0.1. Let's take a look at the panel again. It's not set up yet. Uh, okay, and then moving on, the decay time can all be also relative to the delay. Oh, log. Change it from a linear to a logarithmic signal. And we need to add these all together. Can hold command. I'll duplicate this multiplier. Take another output of the low pass filter. Connect this. And also create a new input on the mixer, which is sharing the same level. Now, if we go to the panel, we can see we're starting to get something close. We can see the end here that we're starting to get something close to a clap. So let's, let's actually listen to a clap sample. I have a few different drum machine clap samples. 808. 707 and 909. So these all sound pretty different, but what they all have in common is it's about, it's between an eight uh, and 12, I think millisecond between the hits. And then the last one is long. Let's look at ours here. We have something sort of approaching that but because of the way that these signals are being mixed together at this output, the sound never actually goes completely to one. Uh, and in these samples, it does almost go all the way down to nothing. We're getting an actual discrete, 
something resembling a discrete clap, something simulating a, dis a discrete individual claps. Uh, that's not happening here. So we need to make some changes. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of this. And I'm going to have this multiplication of the DR and the filter feed into this. So that's not any better yet. Another thing I'm going to do is now the last, because this signal is being multiplied by this signal, we're not getting the extended decay, which is super important to this sound. It needs to sound like a, um, it sounds like reverb. It's, a, it's almost a simulation of reverb. I think that's what the original people who designed this sound had intended. So I'll create another knob. And I'm going to attach it to the decay and release of the final DR in this cascading chain here. Um, for the range, it can be from to 50, say. And here we have. So there, now we have again, once again, we have control and we can simulate that final reverb decay style thing. Another thing though is we, I want to fix uh, the decays of the individual claps sounds so that they're more like discrete individual claps. To do that I'm going to make the decay time of these envelopes a percentage of this delay time. So I'll use I'll multiply Touch this to here, replace that, and I'm going to make a, this can be a constant, and I'll try just 0.5, so it's half. And make sure to set the delay to around. So that's cool, and if we make the delay longer, it's still always going to be shorter than the delay time. They attack the delay, or sorry, the decay times of these envelopes is always going to be less than the delay, which is good. It makes this easier to manipulate something useful with less knobs. I might even make this shorter. 0.4. Yeah, that's good for now. Uh, speaking of making things easier to control with less knobs, we always want this value to be less than the total decay time of our overall envelope up here. So why not do that? I'll get rid of that knob and I'll make another multiply. This will be attached to the decay and release again. And I'm going to take the value from this decay knob Oh, I'm going to need to do something about that. Can't reach. Decay in. And again, I'll multiply it by a decimal point to create a percentage. Uh, this one doesn't need to be as low. So now, if I increase the decay time, it relatively increases this final hit. So yeah, if we go back and listen, it still doesn't sound like these, uh, mostly because of the filtering. The filtering is pretty specific in these. But we have something that's a, a lot closer and none of these really sound like each other. They're all in the same ballpark, but different. But this gives us some controls that we can really start tweaking.
and make into our own clap that sounds like what we want it to sound like. So thanks for watching. Hopefully that was helpful. Like and subscribe if you'd like to see more tutorial videos like this. Have a great day.